In this video, we'll be looking at the multiple choice questions from chemistry paper AQA 7404 from the year 2016. Number 9. Which of the following compounds will form an orange red precipitate when heated with Fehling's solution? Now we must know that Fehling's solution forms an orange precipitate when reacted with compounds containing aldehyde's functional group. Right, so then we look at the options and try to identify the functional groups. For A, we have our nitriles. B will be our carboxylic acids. C will be our aldehydes. And D will be our ketones. So the one that will react with failing solution to give an orange red precipitate will be option C, our aldehydes. Right, A will be nitriles, B will be our carboxylic acids, D is the ketone. Ten, reaction with between bromobutane and potassium cyanide to form pentanitrile. So let's take a quick look at the mechanism. Let's draw out the one bromobutane first. Bromine being at the terminal carbon. So this is our one bromobutane. Bromine being electronegative will carry a partial negative charge causing the carbon that is attached to to be partially positive. So a partially positive carbon attracts nucleophiles. And what is the nucleophile in this reaction? That will be our cyanide ion. So the cyanide ion will attack the carbon causing the bond between the carbon and the bromine to break right so this is a nucleophilic reaction and then what happens will be the bromine essentially is being replaced by the cyanide right this is our new cyanide that's joined to the molecule and then we end up with a carbon that has or with a molecule that has five carbons so this is a nucleophilic reaction there is a substitution between the cyanide and the bromine so this is a nucleophilic substitution reaction D Question 11. Dehydrating propanol, a secondary alcohol, to form propene. So, let's write out the propanol. And then we will get our propene. Even if we are not totally sure what is the full equation, we should at least know that one mole of your propanol, we will expect to have one mole of propene. If we were to balance, we were to balance out the equation. We have three carbons, right, and three carbons on the products. So this, the ratio of these two must be the same. One is to one mole. So let's look at the amounts we have we had 50 grams 
of propanol. First of all, let's figure out 50 grams of propanol, what is the number of moles? To find the number of moles, we will take 50 divided by the relative molecular mass. So we started off with 50 over 60 moles of propanol. Now, we will expect for 100% yield, we will expect to have 50 over 60 moles of propene if there was 100% yield, right? Because one mole of propanol, we will get one mole of propene. So 50 over 60 moles of propanol, we will get 50 over 60 moles of propene. And what is the mass? If it's 100%, Right, mass of propene expected. We will take the moles of propene, 50 over 60, multiply by the relative molecular mass of propene, 42. We do a calculation. Right, we will expect to have 35 grams of propene. Now this is our expectation. Let's compare to what we actually had or what we actually obtained. We obtained only 30 grams. So the percentage yield will be our actual amount divided by the expected amount multiplied by 100% which gives us about 85.7% will be 86. So we have option D. Number 12. Sulfur dioxide is produced when some fossil fuels are burnt. Which of the following statements is true? A. Sulfur dioxide can be removed from waste gas in a power plant by acid-base reaction with calcium oxide, right? This is actually the correct answer. There will be an acid-base reaction. The sulfur dioxide is acidic. It contributes to acid, acidic rain and all that. And the calcium oxide being a non or being a metallic oxide, right? That is a basic. So we will actually form calcium sulfide which is essentially solid powder and then that prevents the gas the gaseous sulfur dioxide from being released into the atmosphere so A is the answer right let's look at the other options that are wrong sulfur dioxide is insoluble in water right? sulfur dioxide is actually slightly soluble in water that is how it contributes to acidic rain when it dissolves in water it forms sulfur or sulfurous acid so b is wrong c sulfur dioxide is actually an acidic oxide all right i keep saying that it forms an acidic rain and all that so it's not expected to be basic d sulfur dioxide is an ionic compound that is incorrect also sulfur dioxide is a simple covalent compound Number 13, which of the following is the correct mechanism from formation of a butene from 2-bromo-3-methyl-butane? So, this is actually an elimination reaction. So, what happens is, 
let's draw out the original compound butane two bromobutane so we put the bromine on the second carbon and carbon number three will contain the methyl group right and then the rest will be the hydrogen Now, for an elimination reaction to take place, we know that the bromine will be gone, and then one hydrogen will be also removed. And the hydrogen must come from a neighboring carbon, meaning this carbon that contains the bromine, we will remove the hydrogen from a carbon that is next to this particular carbon. So it can be removed from here or here, right? It cannot we cannot remove the hydrogen from the same carbon. So looking at that, let's look at our options. Okay, option A is feasible for now because the bromine is removed. The bromine is removed here and then we are removing a hydrogen from a neighboring carbon so it is feasible for now All right let's keep it in one of our options option b we are removing the bromine again and hydrogen is being removed from a neighboring carbon so option b is also possible option c removing the bromine here but then you notice that the hydrogen is being removed from the same carbon that holds the bromine so that is not possible we have to eliminate option c option d also there is the same problem where the bromine is removed and it seems that the hydroxide is actually attaching itself to the carbon it's not removing it's not attach, uh, removing the hydrogen even so this option d is also incorrect so we are down to options A and B. Looking carefully at option A, we will end up with, let's try to draw the molecule that we get from option A. Right, this hydrogen is gone, this bromine is gone, so the double bond will be formed between these two carbons. All right, let's just, let's just remove these two. And then if you look at this molecule, this is actually not 2 methyl built 2 in. It's 1, 2, 3, 4. The, but the double bond is found on the first carbon. So this is actually built 1 in, right, carbon number 1 number two, number three, we number from the functional group and then the methyl is actually from found on the third carbon, right? So this is not the molecule that we ended up with or that we want. So A is out. Let's check B to make sure that that is the answer that we want. The double bond will be formed between these two carbons, right? And we number the carbons one two so this is built two in and the methyl functional group is also found on carbon number two so this is two methyl built two in so our answer is 